Hello guys, welcome to my new video. In this video, I will be talking about experiments done by Faraday and Henry. They both performed three experiments, namely experiment number 1, 2 and 3. In all the above three experiments, he used an instrument called galvanometer. So let's try to understand what is galvanometer instrument. Galvanometer is an instrument which measures the current. So now let's move to the experiment number 1 that is current induced by a magnet. In this experiment, they considered coil that is capital C and a galvanometer that is represented by capital G and a bar magnet which has two poles that is north and south. So to understand this experiment, we will make a table. In the first column, we will consider what he did and in the second column, we will consider what he observed. When he pushed the north pole of bar magnet towards the coil, he observed that the galvanometer shows a sudden deflection, indicating that a current is induced in that coil. Now he brought the bar magnet to rest and he observed that deflection reduces to zero. That is, there is no deflection when the bar magnet is held stationary. At the third time, when he moved the magnet away from the coil, the galvanometer shows deflection in the opposite direction, which will indicate that the reversal in direction of induced current, or we can say the current is induced in the opposite direction. Till now, he played with the north pole of the bar magnet. Now he took the south pole of the bar magnet and repeated the procedure as he followed in the north pole of the bar magnet. And he observed that the galvanometer deflections are opposite to those observed with the north pole for similar moments. And then he took the bar magnet and moved faster towards or away from the coil. And he observed that the galvanometer deflection is found to be very larger. That is nothing but the induced current will be larger when he moved the bar magnet towards or away from the coil with faster velocity. Till now, he did the experiment by keeping the position of coil at the fixed position and moving a bar magnet towards or away. Now, he fixed the bar magnet at a certain place and he started moving the coil towards or away from the bar magnet and he observed the same effects which observed previously. So by all these observations, he concluded that relative motion between the magnet and the coil is responsible for the generation of electric current in the coil. So this is about experiment number one that is current induced by a magnet. Now we'll move to the experiment number two that is nothing but current induced by current. Here he considered two coils namely C1 and C2 and the C1 is connected to galvanometer that is a capital G and C2 coil that is coil number 2 is connected to a battery and the coil C1 and C2 are placed such that they have a common axis. Because of the battery connection with the C2 coil, it produces steady magnetic field around it. So primarily when this coil C2 is moved towards the coil C1, the galvanometer shows a deflection which indicates that an electric current is produced in coil C1. And in the second trial, when C2 is moved away from the C1, the galvanometer shows deflection in opposite direction, which indicates that the direction of induced current is reversed. That is nothing but the current induced in opposite direction in coil C1. At the third time, if the coil C2 is held fixed, and coil C1 is moved, the same effects are observed. At the fourth time, both the coils are held stationary and then he observed that there is no deflection in the galvanometer. It means that as long as there is relative motion between coil C1 and C2, the current is induced in coil C1 and when they brought at rest, there will be no current induced in the coil C1. Now at the fifth time, he moved the coils very faster towards or away from each other. And he observed that there is a larger deflection in the galvanometer. It means that there is larger amount of current is induced. By this also he concluded that varying magnetic field will produce electricity. 
Now he went to the experiment number 3 that is called as current induced by changing currents. In this also he took two coils that is coil C1 and coil C2 and coil 1 is connected to galvanometer and coil 2 is connected to battery and also he took here a key whose one end is connected to battery and another end is connected to coil C2. Now when the key is in on position the galvanometer shows momentary deflection and then returns back to zero immediately. And when the key K is kept pressed continuously, there is no deflection in the galvanometer. And now when the key K is released, the galvanometer again shows deflection, but in the opposite direction and returns back to zero immediately. And when he took the iron rod and he inserted into the coils along the axis and the key is pressed or released, the galvanometer deflection increases dramatically. It means that at that time the current induced will be very large. So this is experiment number 3 that is known as current induced by changing currents. Now my question is that what is the conclusion of experiment number 3 or what you understood from this experiment number 3. If you know the answer comment down in the comment box and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next video. Till then take care.